Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, Mishmash Monday. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. It was Mother's Day yesterday. I hope you enjoyed that. A mother is the greatest profession a woman could ever strive to be. So I hope you took care of mom if she's still around. Uh, you are so lucky, so lucky you uh, can't believe it. I miss my mom all the time, my grandmother too. I'm sure a lot of you are like that. Uh, <clears throat> a couple things to get to today, so uh, let's get started right okay, away. First up, real quick, remember last week we did this thermal detector, uh, heat detector here, and we took it apart, and uh, we uh, remember that we melted that little section. I was telling you that this is a visual indicator to let you know if you look at this and you see it on the ceiling and it looks like this, a hole, instead of something like this, you know that this has been activated and there is no good. But a good friend of the show by the name of Jimmy's The Best Cop said that uh, most likely this alloy that they used to uh, to heat that up instead of a solder was called the Cirillo 136, and that is a special alloy. They make different alloys that melt at different temperatures, but that particular alloy was used a lot in these and also on sprinkler heads, fusible links, things like that. Uh, that you know you could tell by if it uh, if it went off or well, with the sprinkler head it would uh, activate the sprinkler so very interesting you could still buy that it's very common alloy it melts very low and it's also used in the gunsmithing industry uh, for different things uh, interesting so thanks very much for letting me know about that Jim. okay next up <clears throat> uh, we did whipping a quick simple whip on one of the ropes we uh, purchased uh, last week or a week and a half ago and a lot of people said, could you please show how that whipping is done? And it's super simple. This is called a simple whipping. I'm going to just show you real quickly because everybody should know how to do it. And what I like to use, I told you, I like to use like a cotton. This is a cotton twine. It is a twist itself, but um, this is always great. This was always utility twine. Everybody had it. But you can use any, any kind of cord. You can even use copper wire. You can use anything as long as it's, you know, it's got to be quite a bit thinner than the... Uh, than the rope you're whipping. Now to do it, all you have to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is make a, a loop on a piece of twine like this, make a loop and lay it on top of where you wanna do the whipping. So we're gonna lay it right here, just like that, okay? Now you lay it on here and then you start by taking the long end, wrapping it around once like this. You see what we just did? We wrapped it around once and hold it there. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap this around like this, okay? It don't have to be extremely tight, but you see what we're doing? We're wrapping around like that. And remember, you have that piece of loop there. So just wrap the remaining section of rope. And I'm watching this through the camera, so it's a little bit weird to do this way. But you see how I wrapped it around like that? And then when you have this end piece here, you're going to tuck it into this little loop that you had. Okay, so tuck it into there. Like that. Okay. And then when you tuck it in there, you're going to hold it and you're going to pull this, this end tight. And when you pull that tight, let me show you what it's going to look like. You could pull it tight. You could pull it, you could tuck it under the rope or whatever, but you're going to tuck it just like that. Okay. There is your simple whipping. And now what you do is you're going to trim off. And again, you could pull that all the way underneath, but you're, uh, you're going to trim these off. Let me do that quick with a cutter. Now here you could take, uh, I'm just using this to show, this is type on wood glue. This one here is interior, exterior, but you, the other one, the waterproof one, is a better glue to use for outside ropes, but this one works fine. And uh, a lot of times you can mix this 50-50 with water and half glue, half water, so you'll get a better absorption. But I find that this absorbs very well, especially if you put it on heavy like this and, and just let it soak. And what you do is you're just going to cover this whole thing with a glob of glue. And it looks a little unsightly now. But what happens is the excess tends to drip off. So get it all in here, all around the, the uh, there we go, all around the wrapping here. Okay. And now, you see what that looks like? Now, just what that looks like, this thing looks all globby and whatnot but tomorrow that'll all absorb into the rope and i'll show you what that looks like okay it's been 24 hours you could see here what had happened all of the the globbing is all absorbed into the rope and now you can cut this here and you can see here we'll just give it a cut it like this look at that there we go 
<clears throat> you can see it's a nice whipping here and you can see that it's uh, solid. It's not coming off. It absorbed all the way into the rope. Normally you would whip it like this and then dip the whole thing and so the end would be covered with glue, but there we go. So that's, uh, that's a great whipping. Now the white glue leaves this white. The yellow glue obviously tints it yellow a little bit, so... There we go. Now, another way that works uh, of, of whipping or securing the end of a rope real easy is with the heat shrink. Now, a lot of times, like with this rope here, uh, this is the actual way it came from where I bought it. And you can see it comes with uh, kind of a masking tape. Here it is. You see this masking tape over here? That's the way. Remember, I told you, you wrap it and they cut it and that's how they sell it. Well, sometimes that masking tape might fall off, whatever. You have to wrap a little bit of tape, so you can't be afraid in losing a little bit of rope. Wrap a little bit of tape there, cut it, and now you could slip on your piece of heat shrink. And I'm using this um, heat shrink that also has the uh, adhesive inside, and this is a, a really good one. I just pass it over, and uh, and then when you pass it over, you could pull off this tape and slide it up. But I like to, I'll leave that tape on there and just leave it over for the edge. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, once you shrunk the uh, heat shrink down to its uh, tightness, where it's going to shrink no more, uh, and it's really tight on there, let it cool down so it's cool to the touch. Then take your cutters and just cut it off like that. And there is a really attractive and nice... Uh, whipping on the end of your rope and this this will last a long time and you cannot get this off because now that there's a lot of uh, heat shrink glue inside of this particular uh, Wi-Fi or what's it called here it's called the wire fi there's a, a tremendous amount of heat shrink glue in there and I you, it almost oozes out sometimes when you're using it but it's really good because it will not come off that's on there so that's a really acceptable whipping for smaller rope. Okay, next up real quick, I stopped cutting cords. I'm, I'm no longer in the, in the market for cords. I got plenty. However, every once in a while, like last night I was out and I saw this beautiful, this like, like new vacuum cleaner, but it was a Bissell. And it was a heavy duty one. And this cord is, this is one of the better cords that are on there. And uh, so before the sanitation came, I grabbed it. And look at that. You could tell nice copper, 17 gauge, three strand, UL listed cord. But it's a three strand. But what I recently got was I just recently picked up a bunch of these. And you see these, these are ends for the two stranded cords, which I use a lot for my extension lights. You know, the LED lights, they don't use... I mean, probably four of the LED, LED lights would use less than an amp. So I have this cord here and I wanted to put it on again as an extension. But uh, if you've never seen how these work, let me show you. Now you have a couple considerations when you're going to do this. We re remove the screw here that held this on. Uh, the first thing you have to do is this hole here. You have to f make this cord as thick as this hole or else it's going to give you a lot of moving around. You want this to act almost as a screw. So we'll put some heat shrink on there. And remember, you're going to have to put that on the cord before you make your connections. But now you can see when we open this up, basically what it consists of is a couple of prongs. This is the hot. This is the neutral because this is brass. So the black one will go here. The white one will go here. And uh, you're always going to check that with your meter on here. But uh, And there's a little hook here. And that hook acts as kind of like a strain relief that you can wrap the wire through there into here. So let's strip the wire back and put it on. Remember, this, this has to go on to the wire first along with the heat shrink. Because how many times do we hook that up and then realize, look, you know, oops. Okay, there you go. You see how that looks there. We have it wrapped in the hooks there, the cord. We have it tight here. Now this will slide up. Then we'll wrap, we'll wrap some electrical tape around first. And then the, uh, this will cover up the, both the electrical tape and then hopefully take up a lot of that room and that kind of large hole there okay there we go we have a nice acceptable cord here and you can see we filled in that gap with the tape and then the heat shrink so uh that's a real nice cord and it is polarized as you can see so uh test it out it works another one in the can next up real quick i wanted to show you this i wonder if, how many of you have picked this out the last time i went to the long island tool meet my good friend george you know him as magneto man george is also the one 
You remember the car entry we had uh, to, to build a, a car out of a, a two by four? George built one with a glass dome. And I was like, oh, I thought that was so cool. You know where that glass dome came from? That was a uh, antique fuel filter dome. He has a bunch of old fuel filters. He used that. I thought that was so cool. Anyway, George had this box there and I just had to have it. How cool is this, right? It's a regular pine box with nice finger jointing, nice handle on it. But what really makes this special is check this out. The flocking. Is that not awesome? Yep, that purple, that's called flocking. And uh, they used to, used to see that in, in uh, binocular cases and tool cases. And it came in red, green, but the purple was spent uh, usually for higher quality items. So, And I think they call it, uh, that. I think it's named that because it's flocking awesome. Okay, next up, you remember this uh, little hand drill we did a little while ago. Um, got this at the Long Island Tool Meet, and uh, everybody liked it. We tried to do the best we could, but it was all beat up, and it just so happens 357 Magdad was able to make us new decals. And a lot of you said, unless you have a new decal, leave it the way it is. But if you have a new decal, so we do have one. So let's just do a quick paint job, apply the decal and see what it looks like. Nothing could be easier than to take off. This <laughs> comes off like that. And then all we have to do is just unscrew this and we're good to okay, go. Okay, the paint is all gone. You can see here, that's the original casting, both sides. This makes like a Euler's disc. Okay, it's been 24 hours. It's all dry now. And the one thing you have to remember, this was an unusual color. It's a kind of a weird mix between red and orange. I was able to match it. But look at that. Let's put the decal on. And we're calling this project done. What do you think? Do you like the, uh, the decal on there? That's the way it looked from the factory. Looks nice, don't it? There we go. And I left the original black original for the guys that uh, wanted the original. But this is such a nice project. Uh, again, it was a $1 uh, breast drill. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We're going to raffle this off. One of you that come to Jacktown will be going home with this drill. Maybe you could put on your wall. It's just a wall hanger, a little something to give you a remembrance of the show. And also, special thanks to 357 Magdad for supplying the decal. We'll see you at the show at Jacktown. It's going to be great. Okay, so in closing, that was a bit of a mosh, huh? A really true mosh, a Monday mosh. We got a lot of subjects covered. I hope you enjoyed today's show and I uh, hope you can make it to Jacktown on Saturday, we will be there. Uh, we'll be there from early, from daybreak till noon. But we always meet up at the gazebo at 10 a.m. Okay? And uh, I'll be wearing my signature red backpack so you can... Because <laughs> I, I don't look like I normally look in person, you know? I, I do wear glasses. So a lot of times people see me with glasses and they say, well, who is that? He looks something like that guy. The only problem is he's fat in person and... <laughs> So anyway, if you see me, just stop me, say hello, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping to see you all there, Jacktown, Bangor, Pennsylvania, Saturday, rain or shine, and uh, I hope you have a great uh, rest of your week. We'll see you again on Wednesday. Take care now. Bye-bye.